Somewhere on Earth is heading to Asia to discover Laos, the land of a million elephants, a realm of mountains, water, and forest. The Mekong, the world's 10th longest river, crosses the country from north to south and sets the rhythm of life for the six million Laotians. Bordered by China, Burma, Vietnam, Cambodia, and Thailand, Laos has no direct access to the sea. Half the country's territory is covered by forest. It's an island of greenery, populated by more than 60 ethnic groups and a vast store of cultural wealth. Leua, an itinerant vendor, spends most of his time traveling with his family on the upper Mekong near the borders of China, Burma, and Thailand. He knows this mythic river inside out. Peng is also an inveterate traveler, but he sets out for the most remote corners of the country at the wheel of his old army truck. Peng, who practices meditation, is progressing on the path of wisdom that all Buddhists dream of traveling. A thousand kilometers to the south, near the Cambodian border, are the Khon Pa Peng Falls, the largest in Southeast Asia. Soan is a fisherman, a very dangerous profession. Every day, these men working above these turbulent waters place their life in the hands of the spirits of the Mekong. I don't cast my net just anywhere. I cast it only in the spots I know well. This is how I feed my family, according to what nature is willing to let me have. After its involvement in a global conflict, Laos, one of the most heavily bombarded countries on Earth, was long isolated from the rest of the world. Now, Laos is a haven of nature and tranquility. All its rivers flow into the Mekong. Asia's legendary river, called the Mother of All Waters, is a vital artery for the country's inhabitants. Lewa is a sailor of the Mekong. There are many dangers on the river. At each tricky passage, he has to check out the pitfalls. I've come down to check the water level this morning. I'm wondering if my boat can make it through here. There are rocks, a lot of rocks and there's not much water depth for the boat. So no, I won't come through here. It's impossible. Lewa has been navigating on the Mekong for more than 20 years, but he's been captain of his own boat for less than six months. All year round, he travels the river with his wife and two daughters selling his goods. I've had some very scary moments. I always have to be really on the alert. If I don't pay attention at all times, I could have an accident. With the rocks, the slightest error and the boat sinks. If I'm not sure, I prefer not trying to go through. First, I have to check that the rudder is working well. If I'm not in control of everything, I'm taking a risk. It's dangerous here, and I'm putting my family in danger. The Mekong Valley, usually so quiet and sleepy, seems to be waking up.
Lewa at the wheel knows that the slightest error in piloting means a shipwreck. The rapids are like a step, an obstacle they have to get across. He's pitted against the river in a dogged struggle. The boat is practically at a standstill. Each millimeter gained against the current is a victory. The boatmen or the river? Impossible to tell who will win out in the end. The adventurers of the Mekong all know that the river has the right of life and death over its travelers. It's like a mountain torrent. There's a lot of current. Right here, the water accelerates. The current is very, very strong, and it's hard to make any headway. The river is powerful. Yes, I was really afraid. Water is the source of life. We drink it, but it can also kill us. Lewa crossed four sets of rapids that day, each one a moment of anxiety. The motor is on its last legs from the struggle up the river. Leo has to get his family to the shelter of the next village before nightfall. We should all respect the Mekong. People shouldn't be dumping everything into the river. We drink the water of the Mekong. If no one protects the river, it will stay dirty. We should all respect it. It's a nurturing mother for us. The river was here before us. It gives us a living. Everybody here should take care of it. Our couple is quite a lovely story. We're husband and wife, and we always travel together. We trust each other, and we love each other, and we love our children. There's no problem in our couple, and there's a lot of affection in our family. I love this life we lead. Lewa recently bought a 20-meter longboat. It's an old craft, but it has a smart line. In any case, it carries the dreams of Lewa and his whole family. Together, they go up the wild valleys of Laos to sell their pottery and transport anything the villagers living on the rivers may need. Lewa knows all the secrets of the Mekong. There are no markers on the river. There are no charts. Navigating this river means knowing it by heart. Every bend, every hill, every tree, every landmark that could help sailors get their bearings. I am a man of the Mekong. I've lived on the river ever since my early childhood. My whole life revolves around the Mekong. And that's how it will be as long as I live. 
and as long as I can keep going. The machinery tires quickly in this sweltering heat. Leo has to take care of the motor, for the trips last several days. Maneuvering through the Mekong's rocks and treacherous currents, Leowa has to know that he can always count on his motor. In the rainy season when it's high water, the rocks are really submerged, so it's easier to navigate. But right now it's the dry season. The water is low and it can be dangerous. My main worry right now is the motor. If it breaks down, that means big problems. It should be okay. It'll hold up, at least I hope so. I'm not really afraid. The boat continues its ascent of the dusky waters of the Mekong towards the north of Laos. There are no roads or trails in these remote regions, so the only way to reach the isolated villages is by boat. I'm really glad to arrive. I've been on the river since 8 this morning. I can finally get some rest. In any case, we can't go any further. Night's coming on. It's too risky. It's always an event when the floating vendors arrive in a village. This evening, Lewa is stopping in a small Kamu village, an ethnic group that lives along the upper Mekong, one of Laos's 60-odd ethnic communities. We'll spend the night here in Benwain. It's a Camu village. I'm going to see if I can make a few sales at the same time. I really know this place well, and there haven't been any vendors here for quite a while. This is one of my regular stops. There are so many villages along the Mekong. The villagers buy my jars and use them to make their beer and rice wine. The villagers may not always have money, but they do always have something to barter. It'll take just a few minutes for Leua to unpack and sell his wares. I really like traveling. I enjoy the scenery. It's lovely. I like visiting villages like this one. I feel at home all along the Mekong. I really feel at home. Navigating is our way of life and our livelihood. The villagers here welcome Leua like a member of the family. Hospitality is one of the cornerstones of Laotian society. The slightest occasion becomes a good reason to break out a jar of the traditional beer, a Camu specialty.
I sold almost everything. Soon I won't have anything to sell. I'll have to go stock up again. The lights of the Mekong exercise an irresistible attraction on voyagers. The ancient land of a million elephants was for a long time unexplored territory. In the late 19th century, a French adventurer from Brittany traveled the length and breadth of Laos. His name was Auguste Pavi. For years, Pavi traveled the peninsula of Indochina on foot. The Laotians who traveled with him during those long years of walking called him the Barefoot Explorer. At that time, the maps of Southeast Asia were still riddled with blank patches. In 1895, Auguste Pavi drew up the first map of Indochina. He had a particularly tender eye when photographing Laotians. At the end of his life, Auguste Pavi, forgotten by history, wrote in his memoirs, I knew the joy of being liked by the people with whom I stayed. The Mekong is the soul of Laos and the lifeblood of the peoples along it. Everyone tries to live off the river. Adventurers, peddlers, traffickers, and gold prospectors. In their village near Luang Prabang, the former royal capital, Lewa and Boivan turn out hundreds of pieces of pottery. When they're not plying their wares on the river, they spend their time making jars and pots. I dug out this kiln with a shovel in my own hands. It's five meters long, and the hearth is three meters down. We can fire 700 pots or 300 jars at one time. I have to keep a close watch over the firing for 24 hours, a whole day and night. So, we're off again. We're going up the Mekong to the north to sell my wares. This is my profession. It's how I make my living. This is the life that Lewa has chosen. He and his family live a free, nomadic existence on the Mekong. Peng and his uncle Pao are partners from way back. Together they've covered all the trails and tracks of Laos. <laughs> Their work tool is an old Russian truck. It's robust and just never gives up. Today, they're taking on a load of banana tree trunks.
This is where we come to load up. We'll take these trunks to the elephants. I have an elephant too. Mine's made of iron and has wheels instead of feet. And my elephant can do 120 kilometers per hour. You know, nature is generous here. You can just plant anything. Everything grows naturally. This is really a land of abundance. The elephant is the symbol of Laos. The country's elephant population numbers just over 800, half of which are still wild. The Asian elephant was domesticated by man over 4,000 years ago. The Mauts are the elephant's masters, the only ones capable of controlling the instinctive power of these impressive animals. Even today in Laos, these giants of nature are still used for work in the forests. Each elephant has its own personality. It's a sensitive animal and can understand more than 50 commands. Peng and Pao arrive in Sayaburi. They've come to deliver their banana tree trunks to the Laotian Elephant Conservation Center, the only place of its kind in Southeast Asia. Here at the conservation center, a team of veterinarians takes care of the animals. They free the females from their work in the forest so that they can raise their young for the first years of their life. The domesticated Asian elephant is a fragile animal. Its low rate of reproduction makes it an endangered species. In Laos, the elephant is called the cousin of the clouds, maybe on account of its color, but surely because it loves water so much. This morning, Peng and Pao are eagerly awaited visitors, for they're bringing the elephants their favorite snack. According to the popular beliefs in the eternal cycle of reincarnation, the elephant is the final stage before becoming man. It's a very important animal for we Buddhists. It's a sacred animal. They say that Laos is the land of a million elephants. They are beautiful, so majestic. Peng is back on the road. For a long time, his truck was used by the Laotian army for troop transport. 
Seeing it eat up the trail like this, one could say that this truck is a sort of resume of the recent history of the country, a collateral victim of the Vietnam War. This truck is a akak. We can go anywhere with it, up mountains, across rivers. It never gets bogged down. On tough trails, it can take up to two tons. But it's hot inside the cab, especially in this season. It's an oven. There's no air conditioning. It's a Soviet truck. It's all pretty complicated. An old truck, but it's unstoppable. The seat in the cab is directly above the front wheels. So I'm getting bounced all around all the time. It's not easy to handle. The road is a family heritage. For Peng, it's even a vocation, almost a spiritual quest. It's a free life. No constraints, no pressure. I can stay on here with the monks if I want. There's no one telling me what I have to do. When I have a load, well, I earn my living. If I don't, it's no problem. I'm not bothering anybody, just the opposite. That's what my trucker's life is like. I live from day to day, and mostly I try to live according to the rhythms of nature and the passing seasons. I try not to bother others, and I don't want others bothering me either. I am striving to make my heart pure. He who is at peace with himself eventually manages to be at peace with others. He purifies himself, he develops and evolves. Peng often makes stops to meditate. He has always been attracted by the monk's life, its serenity, its sharing. Sometimes behind the wheel of his truck, he dreams of withdrawing from the world to follow another path. In Laos, a man can choose to devote several years to a spiritual retreat and to live the life of a monk before coming back to society. Peng's life is a long road, a path that allows him to live as part of nature, to follow his destiny, and to reach out to others.
Pero ahí va. Oh. Now we can get across. I'm an old hawk hawk driver and I'm good. I learned from very skilled drivers. When you're going uphill, you have to know how to help the motor, go easy, work the brakes, know how to use the four-wheel drive. Eating up these dusty trails for more than 30 years. Its cruising speed hardly ever tops 30 kilometers an hour, but no obstacle seems to stop it. In the mountains of Laos, time seems to stretch out indefinitely. Peng and his uncle have been on the road for more than three days, and the morale is still as solid as a rock. We've got a little problem with the truck, but it's nothing serious. We'll take a look at it. A few minutes with a screwdriver and a hammer are all it takes to get the old truck rolling again. Bopenyang means no problem in Lao. This could be the motto of the whole country. Bopenyang. Bopenyang. Everything is possible in Laos. We can repair anything. With a good dose of determination, we can do anything. And with a bit of patience, we get what we want. Here in Laos, we try to keep life simple. But you can't just say, Bopenyang. If you don't take action, nothing will happen. As the Buddha taught us, there's nothing certain in this world. It's up to us to find peace in the depth of our heart and to find serenity. Only then can one achieve happiness. Peng is fully aware of the risks of the road, but he has faith in his karma, this principle of Buddhism that says people's lives depend on their acts and their past lives. Driving the trails of Laos, Peng is living the spirit of Buddhism. If he ever gives up this roving life, it will be because he has embarked on the path of awakening a different voyage that's like a return to the essential. We're in Kunpapeng. This is a fishing region. Everybody here makes their livelihood from fish, whatever the season or time of year. Oh, 
There are some very dangerous spots here where I don't dare go, where nobody goes. I don't cast my net just anywhere. I cast it only in the spots I know well. This is how I feed my family, according to what nature is willing to let me have. For more than 30 years, Soen has been casting his net into the turbulent waters of the Mekong. Khon Papeng in the extreme south of Laos are the largest waterfalls of Southeast Asia. Here, fishermen brave their fear to cast their nets in the eternal combat between man and river. The eternal cloud. This is where Soan comes to earn his livelihood. In the rainy season, the water level of the Mekong can rise two to three meters, so Soan always has to adapt. He still has a few weeks left before the sky becomes overcast with clouds full of the monsoon rains. The the high water occurs in the ninth and 10th month of the year. It gets very high here. Then no one wants to come here. It's all flooded. During the dry season, the water is very low. So I use different fishing techniques, like fish traps. In any case, I catch only the minimum, just enough to meet my needs. Soan heads back to his village through the treacherous currents. Every time he goes fishing, Soan has to cross the Mekong. He doesn't have his own boat, so he counts on other fishermen and has to pay for each crossing. Upriver from the falls, the Mekong gives an impressive display of its full might. Here, near the border with Cambodia, the Mekong widens into an enormous inland delta. The 4,000 islands form an incredible labyrinth of land and water. We're very close to the waterfalls. We're okay right here. There's no danger, but we have to be prepared for anything especially if the motor breaks down. You always have to have an oar in the pirogue. Right now, the current's not very strong here. It's all right. But if we break down, we'll have to row. It took Soan 20 days of hard work to build this boat. It's his first boat, and he's very proud of it. This little craft will change his life. Soon, he'll no longer have to count on others to cross the Mekong. But before he launches his boat, Soan has to keep an important rendezvous with the river spirits. I'm bringing offerings to the shaman, the great protector of the river, so that the spirits will protect my boat. In Laos, the Basi is a ceremony that seals the destiny of people. The shaman recalls the 32 souls that each human being possesses. The Basi is a way of drawing to oneself the positive influences of the spirits. Uh, 
This is an auspicious day for me. I'm going to launch my pirogue. This means a new life for me and my family. It is really beautiful. I love this boat. It's very well built. I really like it. This is going to make my life so much easier. I'll be able to go where I want, when I want, and I won't have to depend on others to go fishing anymore. I'll soon be independent. When he has enough money to buy a motor, Solan will be able to navigate on the Mekong with his own boat. It's good to live on the Mekong. It's a nice life. It's like traveling on a clear and easy road. I could not live without the Mekong. This river is in my blood. It is part of me. The Mekong is a legendary river. It runs more than 4,500 kilometers from the Tibetan Plateau down to its vast delta. It crosses all of Laos, Cambodia, and the south of Vietnam. The Mekong also borders Burma and Thailand. The lives of 70 million people depend directly on this river, the 10th largest in the world. When I come to fish here in the waterfalls, I have to cross with this cable. There always has to be two or three other fishermen nearby to ensure my safety and to help me if I have a problem. And likewise, I am here to keep an eye on other fishermen. This spot is dangerous. Here on the Mekong, we all help each other out. We catch carp, catfish, all kinds of fish. When I have a small catch, I keep some fish to feed my family. When I get a big catch, I go sell them so I can buy gas. But even more important, I can pay the fare to cross the river on the boat. To make a livelihood from the river's resources, the fishermen have to adapt and be resourceful. The Khon Papeng Falls form a natural, insurmountable barrier. In the tightly knit community of fishermen here, the most daring are also the most respected. These are the tightrope walkers of Khon Papeng. the Mekong dominates this wild, untamed landscape. Under the admiring eye of Soan, Sam Nien juggles with the laws of equilibrium. The cable was strong when I was 12. I'm 50 now, and I'm still crossing it every day. 
It's part of my family's patrimony. No one else can use it. These are my cables, and I discourage anyone else from using them. If an accident were to happen, I'd be held responsible. The cables and I are one. The danger is that the cable gives or that my hands slip. If I fall, my life is over. It's very dangerous. The environment is hostile, and the climatic conditions are extreme in this part of the world. Today, the sky is shedding its excess energy. It's 40 degrees Celsius, and the first monsoon rains are pouring down. Soen has come to see the village healer. This man is a storehouse of knowledge about plants and natural remedies. Soan has been getting dizzy spells lately. He also comes regularly to consult about his malaria. Depending on the diseases, I'll do incantations. I'll prepare concoctions. I'm an accomplished healer. I'm going to give Suan the medication to treat the malaria. That's what's been causing his anemia and dizziness. I've been a healer for about 30 years. I treat many of the villagers here. There are also people from the whole region who come to see me. I treat everyone who comes to consult me. Even though the fishermen of Kon Pa Peng may be protected by the river spirits, they're still constantly risking their lives. It takes nerves of steel to brave the dangers. The slightest error can be fatal for these balancing artists of the Mekong. They need to maintain perfect control of their balance, their movements, and their own fear. Here at Kon Papeng, there are in fact very few accidents. In the spots with a strong current, where there's lots of water, we cannot cross. It's impossible. We know that. That's just how it's always been. Despite all that, if someone decides to cross anyway and they slip, they are done for. How can one appreciate the multiple facets of this unpredictable, mysterious river? At Kon Papeng, locked away in the memory of the fishermen, are all the secrets of the Mekong, the mother of all Asian waters.
I just marvel at the nature here. I want to stay close to it. It is in my blood. My fondest wish is to be able to keep on enjoying this harmony.